Hey YouTube, this is Bill. This is a new unit sitting here, just got it yesterday. JBL Eon 1 Mark II. You might have heard of the previous unit, which was called the Eon 1 Pro, which had numerous issues. I don't want to go into that right now, but JBL has had a number of years to fix it. And we'll see uh, if they have succeeded. They're not calling this Pro anymore, but we'll see. So the reason I purchased this with my all my other gear is I'm still on a quest for the the holy grail of the battery operated system. Of course, you've seen, you might have seen my Bose S1 pair with a Sub 1, which is an incredible system, but that's two speakers, two poles, and carrying a 36 pound subwoofer. So this is an all-in-one unit. So if this is successful, this might be my ticket, what I'm looking for. The only downside of this that I could um, say right off the bat is it is heavy at 42 pounds. So let me continue for the, the unboxing. This is what it looks like in the box. Came well padded. So let me see if I could muscle this out. It's like I said, 42 pounds. It shouldn't be that bad. So this is what's in the box. You got your speaker. You got all your columns embedded inside the speaker, which is unique to, to the JBL system, which is great. You don't have to carry any speaker pole. You don't have to carry any separate speaker bags. So this has your startup guide and a short power cable. I've noticed companies are starting to uh, make the power cable only like one or two meters on the short end to save money. In the past, I've gotten much longer power cables. Anyway, um, the first disappointment is there is no cover to this $1,200 unit. Zero cover for the uh, unit. You want to get one, you have to buy that separate. Again, in, in the past, all the companies came with some kind of cover. So again, that's my one of my first disappointments. I got this unit. It is retail for $1,200. I just purchased it with the Guitar Center 15% off holiday sale. So that knocked off 100 bucks or so. So right now I'm at at 1100 here's the rear view again you can see very clearly how your column array pieces three pieces fit uh, snug into the subwoofer base unit which is really great because one of the reasons I'm purchasing this unit if it works out is even though like I've showed you with the Bose s1 pros it's so light I, I really dislike carrying the speaker stands because even though they're light they're still kind of bulky and you have to carry them. It's, you can't carry, it's hard to carry two speaker hand, stands in one hand. So it, it just complicates things. That's one of my objectives of this rig, this portable micro rig is to delete speaker stands. We'll see if that works. So here is the connection for the first column. And just like all the other units on the market, it's plastic. So you have to be a little careful um, taking those pieces apart. I know on the Bose unit, it's it's a little firm. They kind of stick together. You have to wobble them to get them out. So we'll see how this is in comparison. First step, taking the speaker columns out. Let's see how that works. Okay, it's locked. Locked in which is good. Let's see how to get it out. Looks like we got some kind of control here. Okay. Oh, very nice. Plus one for JBL. Locking columns. They easily come out now. Very good engineering. Plus one for JBL. So the first unit that I'm installing is the battery pack. And that's part of the column system. Again, that's pretty unique, except um, Maui 5 did it first, LD Maui 5. So I don't know if Bose um, got the patent, but it's exactly their system. But it's a great system. You don't have to have any separate external power. 
Um, let's see how it fits in, if it fits in snugly. So besides the slight weight difference, uh, there is a little battery icon on the side that tells you this is the battery part of the array. I placed it inside. There's only It only goes in one way. And if you see these little circles on the back, um, that means that those are facing the back. The front side is smooth. So here is your plastic connectors again. Like I said, you got to be careful with those. The way you disengage it, put it together, you don't want those things to crack. And of course, I did the uh, first thing I was concerned about. Is there any wobble like the famous Pro 16 controversy? Let's see. Oh, no. This, this is steady. This is It goes in to a certain depth. Um, again, better than the Pro 16, but this is really firm. So again, this is a plus for the JBL. Next step is the spacer. There's no um, speakers in there. It's just a plastic spacer to raise the height. And it went in nice, very firmly, the way it fit together. But I tried to take them apart. Very, very tough. I don't even want to try to manhandle it and break those plastic connectors. So what I did is I took the whole column assembly, the battery and the spacer off the subunit. And then I was able to kind of, again, wiggle it back and forth to separate it. So I don't know if that's intentional. They want that kind of connection, but it is not so easy to disengage those two column pieces. And the last piece of the puzzle, these things kind of go together like Legos. Up, 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 and you got your speaker tower on top. Nice height. Um, about six feet, this is considerably over my head. I don't know the exact measurement, but it looks like it's in the seven foot category. And you want a column array to be high, to throw over your audience, because audience dancing in front of your system soaks up dBs, decibels. So you wanna get that system up high above your head, and that projects the sound. One of the things I've been doing that I always do on any new unit I unpack, and that is I've been checking for cosmetic damages. Uh, I've had to return a number of units in the past, little dings and things like that that I'm not gonna accept when you're paying over $1,000. So far, everything looks good here. So that's good news. Okay, so here's the back panel, uh, your mixer section, which is pretty extensive. You have a five channel mixer. And before I continue, the, uh, the power button was a short, one second press and it went on, which is kind of an improvement from the JBL Compact that I have. That one you have to hold for like, I don't know, five or six seconds, which is kind of a pain. So this was nice. Anyway, I have it plugged in right now. I'm charging up the battery. You always want to do that on a new unit, give it a charge. They usually send it to you like 50% from the factory. So you want to give that first charge up to 100%. Here on the back, uh, we have bass, mids, and treble control. So right away, I'm happy, plus one for JBL, because again, from my past videos, I say that's a big negative for Bose. I, don't, I can't understand in this day and age why they delete the mid control, uh, which is so important, but this has it. So that's another plus one for JBL. And of course, for uh, the comeback for Bose is they want you to buy their they're a little mixer that I forgot. I don't know what that's called, but I know it's pricey. It's they have one for 500 and one for 800. So it's just another selling feature. I'm, that that would be too bad if that's the reasoning. Anyway, so this is a five channel mixer. Um, one thing that's not so great is the it does have a pass through, but for some reason it's one quarter inch. And if you look at their next model up, the PRX, they use XLR out pass through XLR. So I, again, I'm not sure why they did that. And the previous model uh, of this unit, I guess you can call it the Mark One, but it was called the Eon One Pro, that did have XLR out. So I don't know why they downgraded that. So that's a negative in my book. You're probably wondering why I have a Bose unit out, since this is a unboxing about the JBL 
Beyond Mark II. Well, anyway, this is the Bose cover for the Sub 1, and it fits like a glove, because that's the Eon 1 Mark II under there. And the reason I have to use this is because JBL didn't provide a cover. So luckily I, I have this, and it's gonna work out perfectly. But really, JBL at this price range, uh, you should really be adding the $35 cover for gigging musicians. Definitely a knockdown on this review. Here's a definite plus for this unit, JBL in general. Um, they have two USB charging ports. So that's great. So right now I'm charging my tablet. So while you're playing, if you're using tablet or iPhone for backing tracks, you don't have to, that's one less thing to worry about that your battery is depleting. So that's really great. Uh, I don't think any other company has done this. I know GL, JBL has this on their EI-1 Compact. So this is definitely a plus in the JBL column. But on the other hand, I was looking for the tablet holder that the compact has and they don't have it can't have everything in this configuration i took away the spacer so what i have is the battery compartment column on the bottom and then of course the speaker array so in situations where you're not playing in front of a large crowd and you don't need to project far or get over the heads of an audience in front of you you can take away the spacer and you have your speakers more at ear level. I was playing yesterday uh, kind of near field and I had it with this situation and it sounded really nice. This is a definite plus for JBL. I also have the EV Evolve 30 and they cannot do this. They have their columns and it has to stay at seven feet. You can't take away any columns. Some people have asked, can you um, take away uh, that bottom column and use only the speaker column into the base? And the answer is no, because that's your battery power. This, of course, remember the old Bose Compact where you were able to put everything, the speaker array into the base unit, which was very interesting. No other company has done that. But this is nice. This So for a smaller gig, uh, this kind of looks less imposing than a seven foot column. This is definitely a plus in my opinion. Talking about some of the specs that are listed, uh, they list this unit as 400 watts RMS, and they claim a peak of 1500 watts. It's kind of unusual. Uh, usually a peak will usually about be double of your RMS, which would be about 800, or maybe 900 tops, but, but how they get to 1500, I'm not sure. Something maybe I, I'm gonna reach out to JBL and ask them a question. They claim 37 hertz on the bottom end. This is a 10 inch woofer. That's pretty, that's a big claim. I haven't done any uh, extensive testing. I'll be doing that in the future. But I know my uh, Bose Sub 2, which is comparable to a 15 inch unit, goes down to that, that those type of lows, 37. So again, I'm not sure if they can match that or where they're getting their figure from. The specs say 20 hertz on the top end, which is great. And unfortunately, Bose doesn't quite reach there. That's one of their weaknesses. And they're claiming, again, I haven't done any tests as far as volume. They're claiming 119 dB on battery and 123 dB on when you plug it in. So when you plug it into AC, you get more power. So that would be more powerful than your... Bose Pro 8 at 118 dB and about equal to your EV30, also at 123 dB. Uh, as far as battery power, 119 dB, if that's true figure, that would be excellent because I don't believe uh, any other company has been able to beat 119 or 120. I think that's pretty much tops. Again, the Maui 5 Go, they're claiming 120 dB, but... Um, if you've seen my past video, it's a little rolled off on the top end, but it is a very powerful unit. Again, that's something I'm hoping to test side by side. I think I proved to you that I don't work for JBL. I don't think someone who works for JBL would demonstrate the Bose cover on there. So all the videos I've seen so far online are from JBL reps 
or from uh, music stores selling this unit. So I believe I'm the very first um, private person who's reviewing this. So I'm gonna give you the pluses and the minuses with complete honesty. And then at, I'm gonna tell you if I'm gonna keep this unit. Hopefully I will. Anyway, let's talk about some of the minuses I've already discovered. Number one, plug and play. I would not consider this unit plug and play, even though it should be. So when you first set it up, you have to download an app. Okay, that's not so difficult. But um, people, and myself included, have reported issues. When they download the app, then they have to pair with the phone. And, and sometimes it's, in my case, it said pairing incomplete. I had to go through the process. I had to delete the app. I had to try it again. So it took, a good, it took some time. It was frustrating. And of course, if it didn't, if it took much longer, I would have returned it right there. But it, it eventually went through. And so I'm hoping that won't be an issue in the future. Talking about the app, and again, I have the EV30M, and I'm gonna have to say that app is definitely superior. It's much clearer, easier to use. This app is good, but uh, every, everything, so I'm using a cell phone, a small screen, and so they got the five channel mixer on that one small real estate of your cell phone. Of course, using an iPad or would be better, but I'm using my cell phone majority of my time for backing tracks. And so, for example, I'm, I click on channel five for Bluetooth backing tracks, and the mixer doesn't disappear like the EV app does. It's, you, you have to see the whole mixer in front of you. So that makes what I'm trying to adjust very small. It's kind of tedious to, to uh, you have to use a slot, your finger as a slider. And so again, the app is, it works, but, um, Definitely the EV app is superior. One of the strange things I found, um, which I think is a negative, is your gain, visual gain. For some reason, of course they use red for clipping, red for mute, which is standard. But they green, you would think green means your strongest signal. Well, in this case, it doesn't. Green means a medium or a decent signal where yellow is the best. To me, to me, that's kind of confusing. You know, I've always thought of yellow as, you know, a yellow light when you're driving. It's kind of a warning. So, well, they have it the opposite. I don't know why they did that, but I mean, it's not a, it's not a deal breaker, but maybe that's something they can turn around in the future in a firmware update. Green should be your best signal. Yellow should be a marginal signal, and of course, red should be mute or clipping. Another negative that I want to mention, and I do think this is kind of a downside that I'm not enjoying, the battery power. I mentioned that the column array, the battery section on the bottom, is probably taken from the Maui 5 Go, which is a great system. Uh, unfortunately, and I guess they didn't... Uh, get it directly from them from a patent that, that they're paying for because the Maui 5 Go has battery indicators right on the back of the column, v very visual. They have five little circles and if all five are on green, you know you have a full full battery. Uh, here at the JBL, they're using a, a tiny screen on the back, which is good. I mean, that's definitely uh, an improvement from from their past units. But on the screen is a tiny battery indicator, and it's very hard to read. I, I had to get down on my hands and knees and bend down to look at it. Very, very inefficient. And the number one thing that I, that I don't like is it's not digital. Bose has on their app, they have a digital readout. So I can look at the app and it says exactly 75%, 85%. Here they have just a picture of a little battery with a couple of hash marks. Not not the greatest for, for, for this day and age. And then they have the same battery indicator on the app itself. Same thing, it's not digital. So my comeback is, gee, I can go to uh, Walmart and get a, a external, small external battery pack that has a digital readout for 30 bucks. How, why is that missing? Again, maybe that's something they can do in a firmware update in the future. Another negative I want to state is the instructions they give you is really poor. They give you a one-page startup guide, and it basically ha has 
90% uh, of what you need to know about this unit missing. So they expect you to go online and read the manual online. Again, saving paper, but uh, the, the startup guide is, is, is pretty, pretty thin. They really should give you more information. I knew a little bit more about uh, setting it up and, and overcoming some of the issues I had was because I watched a couple of YouTube videos, but it shouldn't have to be that way. Okay, wrapping it up. I'm gonna be testing this in comparison to my gold standard as far as battery quality sound, and that is my Bose S1 Pro. So if, uh, if you watch my past videos, the Maui 5 um, was beaten by the, the Bose S1 Pro as far as clarity of sound. So I'll be, that'll be my first test. Uh, my second test will be, is this as loud as the Maui 5? Because that is my loudest battery powered unit. That'll be an interesting test. So uh, there'll be more tests in the future. I have tested this at a very low level and it did sound good and clean. So I'm definitely keeping it unless there's some major issues that pop up. So the question is, is it um, the best battery power? I'm not sure. It's definitely a little heavy. So it's not something I'm gonna be taking all the time. I mean, just to go from here, from my living room to my backyard, I'm saying to myself, dude, you, I really wanna drag uh, 43 pounds when I have that 15 pound um, S1 Pro right next to me. Going back to the app, as I mentioned, it does have a good equalizer, highs, mids, and lows, but a negative is the fact that you do not have any separate gain control for your subwoofer section. So, for example, I was listening to some female vocals yesterday, which had a nice bass line that goes with it. Unfortunately, if, if I want to increase the bass, that's gonna affect the vocals. So I really think having a separate bass control is important for the subwoofer. And again, here we go again, EV, their app does that. And it's very effective. Bose Pro 8, Pro 16, same story. They do not have separate gain on their subwoofer section. That's why I'm enjoying my sub one and sub two on the Pro 32 because it has a separate gain. But uh, EV tops them all because it's all done from an app at a distance. So I definitely think that is a negative. So keep your eyes open for some for a, a battery of tests on this new unit. I'm gonna be testing it in comparison to other battery units. And um, it looks very promising. So far what I see is it's pretty, pretty positive. I'm, I'm happy with the unit. It's not perfect. I guess nothing is. So I guess the quest won't end here. In the future, there'll be something better. But right now, this looks, this looks interesting. So keep tuned. Watch out for some videos in the future. This is Bill. Thank you.